Hey guys, this is Nolapada, and on today's video we will talk about No Man's Sky's first anniversary update, Atlas Rises. This was the third update that Hello Games released. It was literally a game changer, and today we'll go into how many great additions this update added. It was exactly one year and two days after release when this update dropped. Our long wait was tempered by earlier smaller updates, and then by the Waking Titan ARG, which I just made a video about by the way. The hype was real. Firstly and most anticipated was joint exploration. No, not that. Not that either. There you go. Joint exploration was their way of adding multiplayer, kind of like a beta test. They had not yet implemented character models or third person, so you could see other players as floating orbs of light. Up to 16 players could see and talk to each other through voice chat. And Hello Games mentioned that, while interaction with others is currently limited, this is a very important first step into the world of co-op in No Man's Sky. It was basic, it wasn't full featured, but it was an introduction that that's the direction they're going towards. Eventually they will better this system. I would say that this was the biggest missing feature that turned off a lot of people when the game first came out. Hello Games had emphasized that this game wouldn't focus on multiplayer, and they also mentioned that it would be almost impossible to find somebody out in the universe. But they had also mentioned in interviews uh, No, you don't see yourself, so the only way for you to know what you look like is for somebody else to, you know, to see you. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes, but the chances of that are incredibly rare, just because of the size of what we're building. You can't really blame the hyped up fans for expecting multiplayer after hearing something like that. On the first day the game came out, two friends actually met up in the same exact planet. Even though there wasn't an easy way to do that, they managed to do so, and they still couldn't see each other. Hello Games' bluff was kind of called out because it wasn't almost impossible to see someone. It was literally impossible because they hadn't added multiplayer. Yet here three updates later, they finally did in their first version, albeit simple. They would flesh it out in the future to be a decent and fun co-op experience. Atlas Rises also added a new storyline to the game, the story of Artemis a lost traveler whom you try to track down and rescue. It's great to see them add a story as it gives players who need that sort of narrative drive to keep playing something to work towards. Although I know for most players the appeal is not really in the story but in what you can do outside of the story. Even then, this story still has its deep moments and interesting dialogues. But I have mentioned in the past that the story is not for everyone. But I will say especially when this update came out, this applied even more. One criticism I have of this version of the story is that it was marketed as a 30 hour campaign. And it does take that much time, but most of that time was just spent on grinding and tracking down certain materials to be able to continue in the story. Thankfully, in future updates the story was tightened up and most of this grinding was cut out completely. So now it takes a much more reasonable amount of time for the amount of narrative in it. Along with the story came the addition of a new race of aliens from another dimension, the Travelers. They're a lot less common to find than the other races, but they could point you to a very important location relating to portals. This update also added the rare exotic ships. These only came in the best class, the S class, and they had higher bonuses in all three categories instead of just specializing in one category. But the drawback was they came with smaller inventories. Back then you couldn't really upgrade your inventories like you can now to make a super overpowered ship. So the drawback was you didn't have a lot of space to upgrade or store a lot of stuff. These exotic ships were pretty much like the supercars of No Man's Sky. Small, uncomfortable to sit in, but fast, maneuverable, and with a bunch of bonuses. Another big feature that they added with this update was a space station mission system. Anywhere you could go would offer you different missions by the different factions. This was your main way of earning nanites back in these days. I remember these missions being very easy to cheese. I remember accepting the same type of mission from different stations. For example, scan 10 plants. Then I would complete the mission once and I would get all the rewards even faster. This still kind of exists in the game in the eliminate creatures and destroy sentinel missions. But for a lot of the other missions, they changed it so you can't cheese it so easily anymore. I do wish that they would overhaul this system because it hasn't changed a whole lot since Atlas Rises. Maybe making more high rank missions give way more money or nanites because as the game is now, you just kind of do them for fun instead of for the rewards because once you have money set up and nanites, 
the 500 or 200 nanites that you get isn't really much. This update also activated planetary portals. Now with the right planet address, you could join a friend who had found a beautiful planet, or you could go look for a certain ship that you saw posted online. Portals changed the way this game worked. Now you could share your discoveries and people could go see them for themselves. Portals were shown in gameplay trailers before No Man's Sky released, but on launch, there was no way to track them down. And if you ran into one, you couldn't really turn them on. People tried. They shot at them. They drove their vehicles into them. They tried everything. But thankfully, this update let them be activated finally. In the Atlas Rises update, the galaxies were also reset to add new types of planets and also add a more in-depth economy and conflict levels to the different star systems. Along with these economies were added trading goods that you could buy at one system and haul to another system for profit. The galaxy map was also improved greatly to show all this new information. The new planets they added also showed off brand new high definition assets. I think that these desert planets are one of the most beautiful planets that you could find in this update. They also added some weird exotic planets that added that alien variety that was kind of missing from the game. Your binoculars in game, what the game calls analysis visor, was also refreshed to show more detailed and interesting information about what you're scanning and also what you can find on the planet. They also added secondary resources, which gives you a reason to scan plants and rocks now, because now when you scan something, you could see what its secondary mineral is, and when you mine it, you would get that mineral. Another addition which I don't see much love for is the in-game guide. It's kind of like a Wikipedia for all sorts of topics in the game. It's especially helpful if you struggle with one certain gameplay part. You can simply open it up in-game and brush up a little bit on what you might have missed. I think this guide is a lot easier to read and more concise than most articles you could find online. Another feature added was that you can now dig and add dirt wherever you wanted with a new terrain manipulator, as you can see here in this clip. They also improved spaceflight and combat so you can now turn quicker in your spaceship and be more responsive. They also improved the artificial intelligence of all these pilots that you're fighting so it made combat a lot more engaging than it used to be. They also improved low flight even further. The previous update addressed this a little bit but Atlas Rises made it so you could actually crash into a mountain and into trees. Not that you would want to crash into trees but the fact that it doesn't wrestle control away from you whenever you get close to something is very satisfying. You can now summon your ship from anywhere on a planet. This made it so you didn't have to feel trapped being close to your ship because now you could really just go out and explore without having to dread walking all the way back to your ship hundreds and hundreds of units away. Bruh. This update also added separate inventories for cargo and tech in person and also a tech inventory on your starships. This is a very powerful feature. I just wish that they made the max tech inventories a little bit bigger as to this day they're still limited compared to the regular inventories. You can now warp between stars on your freighter, another useful feature for your capital ship. You can find crash freighters on planets. These had lore snippets and some good loot to dig up. The Atlas Rises update had its two flagship features, basic multiplayer and a storyline, and many additional improvements that I couldn't even start to get into here. A lot of minor fixes, a lot of quality of life improvements. Around this time was when I really started considering No Man's Sky to be a complete product, a standalone game. I even recommended it to friends on occasion. If No Man's Sky had launched in this state, I doubt that there would have been such a huge backlash. It added so many things that were expected and missing in this game, and the updates I'll cover in the future did even more and went beyond anything that any of us could have imagined. I want y'all to know that this video, along with the previous two update videos, will be compiled into one larger video about the first year of updates. And I also wanted to inform you guys that I plan on making content on other games soon along with No Man's Sky videos. So if there's any game you think I should check out or review, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Nolopada, and I am out. Don't turn your back on me, Scar.